All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the 2020 Robohawks University. This is week one. Today we're going to be going over safety. And here with us is um, Jacob Butler, who's going to be taking us through the presentation. Yeah, hi. Some of y'all know me. Some of y'all might not. Uh, I'm an alumni on the team, and I did safety on my time on the team, so I'm going to be helping out with the uh, safety PowerPoint today. So right now we're just going to go over some of our like general PPE guidelines and how that is going to affect us with COVID-19 going on. So it's important to note here that we don't have a full set of guidelines from the county yet. We're still working on all of that. So this is just our general setup and what we'll be doing. And you can go ahead and just put everything up uh, on the slides then. So uh, we have PPE that's required at all times. And this is again, just for a general shop. And then we're throwing in like all the COVID-19 guidelines that we're setting up right now in there. So safety glasses at all times in the shop, those have to be clear and see-through. You can't have any tinting in them at all. Uh, we have to be able to see your eyes. Closed toe shoes are required at all times in case you're dropping anything. They don't have to be steel toe. I would suggest something steel toe just in case you roll something over your foot, you drop something on it, but closed toe at least required at all times. Hearing protection is required on your person at all times and used when you're running loud equipment. Um, again, I would suggest using it when you run any type of equipment. You'll hear constantly people complain as life goes on, they lose their hearing and they'll blame it on being in the shop, being around loud machinery. So wear your hearing protection. And then obviously a mask will be required at all times in the shop. At no time will you be able to take off your mask. Um, if you are in your car alone, that's probably the only time you can take your mask off. But if you were in the shop with other students, you have to have your mask on. When you're within six feet of another person, you need a face shield. So we're gonna be getting close and working on the robot. We're gonna be within six feet. So you're gonna to have to have a face mask for that. Uh, no jewelry of any kind is allowed. No rings, necklaces, earrings, any of that is allowed. Uh, rings can get stuck in machinery and pull your fingers off. Uh, your necklaces can get stuck in something spinning and pull off. Uh, no like lanyards around your neck or anything like that. Uh, long hair has to be tied back, preferably in a bun, not a ponytail. A ponytail can get caught in something. Uh, baggy clothes, you got to keep rolled up. So like your baggy sleeves, uh, make sure you roll them up when you're using machinery because they can get caught in something. Hey, hey Jacob, uh, can we, can we sure. pause for just a second? We're having a little bit of technical difficulty because there's music that's sure showing up that we're not sure about. Yeah, you can go ahead. Can we still hear the music or no? It's all good. Everything's good. Awesome. Gotta love it. Uh, okay, so yeah. Hoodie drawstrings need to be tied up or tucked in because those can get caught in machinery and get yanked out too. Um, and then that is our general PPE requirements. So uh, next we're going to be going over how we're going to be handling uh, injuries in the shop. So any injury... Or, sorry, any injury to any team member must be recorded via an injury report form. These are in our binders. Your safety captain knows where that is. Mentors should know where that is, too. Uh, you need to make a mentor aware of any and all energies, no, sorry, injuries, no matter how minor. So even if it's a small cut, uh, a small cut can turn into something worse if it's not corrected. So all the recorded injuries will be used to improve the safety culture of the team. So we're going to use them to make changes and improve. Uh, and then our goal should be to have zero injuries. Obviously, you know, that's ideal, but uh, that's what we're gonna try and do. And again, before we move on, I think it's important to note, again, we don't have our full COVID-19 guidelines, but in addition to anything we show you and teach you today, there's going to be precautions made in place for that. So things are going to be kept clean, uh, People are going to be following the social distancing guidelines. We're going to be doing whatever the county tells us to do. But today is just a general safety, uh, what you need to know for a regular season to keep yourself safe uh, around tools and machinery. OK, so now we're just going to go over some general shop safety. Uh, we're not going to go into anything super, super in-depth uh, in the general, but uh, just some stuff to keep you safe that you need to know about. So uh, it's important to note, safety is everybody's job. 
So it's not just one part. It's not just the safety captain's job. It's not just the mentor's job. Everybody has to be aware of safety. Safety isn't a priority. Priorities can change. Safety is a condition of being in the shop. It's something that goes on always. So everyone needs to consider themselves and others whenever you do anything in the shop, when you're running a piece of machinery, when someone's running on a piece of machinery and someone's working on something, you need to be aware of what's going on and uh, respect other people that are in your area. Uh, make sure that everybody's following the rules. And we're not asking you to be a dictator and start going around and checking everybody and making sure they're doing what's right. But if you see someone start a machine and they don't have any safety glasses on, or if you see somebody about to like lift something or move something unsafe, uh, make sure you say something. And you can do that respectfully. You don't have to be disrespectful, but it's just important to make sure that everyone's looking out for each other and we're creating a safe environment for everybody. So just a little bit about uh, shop equipment here. So uh, if a student, if you haven't used a piece of equipment before, or you need a refresher, you got to be accompanied and taught by a mentor. So if you go, hey, I don't know how to use a bandsaw, I've never used a bandsaw, uh, get a mentor and they'll teach you how to do that. So again, one thing that we plan to do, uh, we're going over safety today, but what's super important is actually being in front of the machine and seeing it used and then using it yourself so you understand how to operate the equipment safely. And that's something once we have all the guidelines and once we figure out what's going on this season with in-person, uh, we will get that done. That's gonna happen. But if you don't know, or if you say, hey, I know we've been taught on this, but I don't really feel comfortable, can I have help? 100% mentors are there for that. No one expects you to know how to use every piece of machinery. No one expects you to know how to use it for life. But uh, if you need help with it, there's gonna be someone there who can help you. So every machine has its own set of rules for safety and housekeeping. Uh, things need to be cleaned off before and after use. Everything needs to be you know, done in a safe manner and not every machine is run the same way. So you need to make sure you know what the safety guidelines are for each machine. Uh, make sure your work area is clean before and after using the machine or before and after working on anything. You don't want to set down a part on the top of a dirty area and start working on it. You don't want to run a machine that has a bunch of uh, scraps in the way or anything. You want to make sure your work area is safe. Uh, yeah, when you're cutting material like on a drill press or a bandsaw, uh, excess waste that comes off of that is often really sharp. So metal shavings, uh, sometimes even pieces of wood can splinter. Uh, you need to make sure that you're not grabbing that, that's not getting uh, flung anywhere. Make sure that it's getting cleaned off with a brush. You don't ever want to use uh, air to spray anything off. Uh, that's dangerous. It can put dust up in the air. All right, and we're moving on to hand tools. So uh, it's important that you are using the right tool for the right job. Uh, a screwdriver is not a hammer. A wrench is not a hammer. Do not use it like a hammer. That's improper use and can cause damage to the tool and could possibly cause a tool to break and hurt somebody. You also don't want to use broken or damaged tools. So if you see a tool and you go, hey, this piece is kind of loose, this doesn't look right, the end of this is mushroomed, uh, you know, it's straight up broken here. Do not use it. Tell a mentor when you see a tool in bad condition or if you're unsure of its condition. If you go, hey, I don't know if this is, should be like this. Is this right? Ask a mentor and they'll help you out. Uh, be aware of where your hands are when you're working. I know that sounds kind of silly, but if you're holding something in one hand and using a screwdriver in the other hand to screw something into that piece, make sure that you're not applying so much pressure that you slip and stab your hand with a screwdriver, things like that. When you're drilling, make sure your hand is in, a, is in the right spot. Uh, when you're putting a screw through something, make sure there's like no hand or piece of material on the other side. Uh, make sure you put tools back where you find them. That's a big issue in the shop is keeping things orderly. Uh, make sure the screwdriver is going in the bin marked screwdriver. If we need a screwdriver for something or we need a tool to pull something apart, we want to make sure we have access to it and know where it is. So, and don't leave the tools out unless you intend to use them. Uh, obviously, if you're working on something for a period of time, you can keep the set of Allen wrenches out, you know, next to you. But if you're done with that, try and put it back. Uh, keeping stuff out isn't really smart. Uh, it gets in the way. We lose things. Just make sure you put things back where you find them and treat the shop and the tools in the shop better than you would treat your own. It's important that we leave the shop better than when we found it. It's important to leave the tools in a better condition than when we found them. All right, battery safety. This is really important because obviously all of our robots are going to be using a battery. Uh, they're really 
more dangerous than you think, and it's important to keep them safe. When you're moving and carrying the batteries, always use two hands, never hold them with one hand. They weigh a lot, and you want to make sure you get a good grip on them. Uh, I normally put one hand on the side, one hand underneath, put both hands on both sides, whatever works best for you, but never hold them by the wires. You're just going to rip connections off, and that's a problem, never fun for anybody. Uh, the batteries normally have a protector that goes in the end connector. It's just a plastic piece that sticks in so that nothing can get into the connector. If there is a battery that isn't connected, it needs to have one of those connectors in it. The only time that there's even a slight uh, exception for that is a battery that's in the robot and has been disconnected for some purpose. If there are batteries on the side somewhere, if there are batteries and a charger that aren't plugged in, they need to have those connectors in there. If a battery is broken for any reason, you need to let a mentor or safety captain know. Uh, the safety captain will notify a mentor. It's not anybody's job specifically to clean up that battery spill. We wanna leave that to a mentor. The safety captain will be trained on how to do that. And we have a battery spill kit located in the tool cabinet. So it's just an acid and you wanna neutralize the acid and then sweep that up. You need to use the right kind of gloves. Uh, it's something we're not, it's like putting out a fire. Not everyone is expected to use the fire extinguisher, to use the battery spill kit, but you need to know where it is and there needs to be a person designated who's gonna use it. All right, uh, and next, uh, moving and lifting. So this might seem kind of uh, silly, but it's really important that when you are taking something from one side of the shop to the other, or you're moving anything around, that you're doing it in a safe manner. So you really wanna plan your path from A to B. It's like, okay, we're moving these boards from you know the garage doors in the shop to the area where we're working we need to make sure that you know there's not stools and stuff in our way no one's going to trip on the way there's not uh cords and like material laying on the floor that we're going to trip over uh, make sure that when you are moving a large object you are aware of where people are and where that object is the geometry of that object so i'm sure you've seen cartoons before where someone's holding something over their shoulder and they turn and whip around and knock somebody over the head or knock somebody over we don't want anyone, anyone doing that make sure that you're aware of what you're holding where you're moving it uh, when you're lifting heavy objects like the robot you want to make sure you're lifting it with two hands and you're lifting them with your legs and not your back uh, i know you know, that some, sounds like something you'd say to an old person, but you really want to make sure you're lifting with your legs and not your back. You can cause serious injury that way. And it's just how you should train your body to lift these things. It's the best way to do it. Okay, now we're moving on to machines, safety. So this is for the specific machines in the shop. And I want to say again, this is not a substitute for actually sitting in front of the machine and running it and being taught how to run it in person. Again, we're going to try and do that as best we can with the guidelines. And if we have people working in the shop, uh, we're going to be training them how to use the machinery safely. So just take that into consideration when you're looking at all this. These are just general safety guidelines for the machines that we use, but there is you know, more to using the machine. So this will teach you how to use the machine safely in a safe manner, but again, it is not in a you know, in place for actually running the machine in person. Uh, so first up is the drill press. Uh, when you're running the drill press, you wanna make sure that the material that you're trying to cut is clamped to the table. Uh, there's also a little vise on one of our uh, drill presses in the shop. So whatever you need to drill through needs to be clamped to that. Most of the time when you're trying to hold a piece there and you drill into it, it's gonna spin you need it clamped down because the drill bit is going to bite into it and immediately try and spin the work instead of cut through it. Uh, so we generally use scrap wood underneath the piece that you're cutting so that you don't cut through the table. The drill press is designed to the table have a hole in it and the drill press goes through that, but sometimes the table is moved or it's not set up accurately or there's other stuff in the way like the, the vise that's there. And you wanna make sure that you are not drilling through the table or drilling through any equipment that's used to clamp your piece of material to the table. Uh, make sure you remove any scraps that are on there with a brush and not by hand. So for example, if you're cutting through a piece of aluminum, normally there'll be aluminum scraps. You wanna brush that away and clean the surface instead of scraping over it with your hand so that those flakes don't get stuck into your hand. Uh, it's the same thing with wood. It'll probably be small like uh, pieces of wood, but they won't really splinter, but every once in a while you'll get splintery uh, wood in there and you really don't wanna clear that with your hand. 
Uh, you want to make sure you're cutting at the right speed. So for some material, you want to cut at a different speed. Uh, that, uh, it, that That's more specific to, uh, again, the bit you're using and the material you're cutting through. And you want to make sure you're doing that so that you're not, you know, cutting super slow through a piece of material, it could be dangerous. Um, and you never want to slam the press down. You don't need to go inchingly slow, but you don't want to slam the press into the material and go at hyper speed when you're drilling through it. Uh, and you want to make sure you wait for this machine to stop spinning before you reach and try and clear out any material. Also, I believe one of the drill presses in the shop actually uh, has a slow release to it. So when you release the handle, it goes up slowly, uh, sort of like closing a door. It, it's uh, critically damped so that it's not just going to fly all the way back up. But not all of them are like that. So we make sure when you're releasing that handle that it goes up slowly and doesn't slam into place. Uh, you want to also make sure that before you use a bit in the machine that that bit isn't broken or damaged. That could uh, you know, cause the bit to crack when you're cutting through material and launch shards everywhere. And you also want to make sure any guards that we have are in place when you're using the machine. Bandsaw is a piece of machinery in our shop that gets a lot of use out of it. So it's really important that you're operating this machine safely uh, and you, you know, respect it and respect people who are using the machine. So the blade guard uh, is the piece that covers the blade and it sort of holds the blade in place and keeps it from wobbling. So the bandsaw is a continuous loop of cutting blade that's in that machine and you if it's not held in place properly, it will flex and bend. So you want to make sure that you're using as less, the, the least amount of bend and flex as possible to be ma making sure that you're not going to flex that blade in a way that it's going to break. So the height of that blade guard needs to be a quarter of an inch above the material that you're cutting and it needs to be locked in place. Normally there is a like turnkey on one of the sides of the bandsaw and that needs to be locked in place so that it doesn't move up or down. Uh, you want to keep your hands as far from the cut as possible, and you never want to cut small material. And what I mean by small material, I don't mean thin material. I mean a piece that is very small. So if you have like a square piece of wood that is an inch by an inch, you really don't want to be cutting that or, or anything smaller than that on the bandsaw. Uh, that's super dangerous. Your hands are really close to the cut. It could pull you in, and that's just not ideal. Uh, you want to use the proper guards when necessary. So sometimes you can attach a guard on the side that will keep your piece straight and you can just push it through and that uh, reduces the amount of hands that you have to have in the scenario. So you want to make sure that you're using those when necessary. Uh, when you're cutting something circular or rounded, so for example, if you have like a parabolic curve that you have marked on a piece of wood and you want to cut that out, uh, make sure you make relief cuts and relief cuts are straight cuts that go into the edge of the curve and then you're cutting out essentially tiny pieces of material instead of one long curve. So they're sort of uh, lines that would normally be tan not well not tangent to the curve, but straight against the curve of like the, uh, the, the side of a semicircle. And then you're cutting through all of those instead of just one line of the semicircle. Uh, if you ever need to stop cutting, so let's say you're cutting a straight line into a piece and you decide, oh, I need to stop and then cut through the other side. Make sure the material is stays where it is in the cut. You turn the machine off, keeping the material in the same place. Wait till the blade stops, and then you can back it off from the blade. Never back a piece of material off of the blade while it's running. It's super dangerous. You risk breaking the blade. You risk messing up your material. Uh, it's just not a good thing to do. You also don't want to use excessive force. Don't slam stuff into the saw blade. That's dangerous. Uh, you don't need to be, pu again, pushing anything through at hyperspeed. It's going to cut. Don't be super slow either as to just sit there and burn material like wood. But again, you don't need to be flying through stuff. Just go with the cutting speed. You'll be able to feel it when you uh, use the machine. And again, remove any scraps of the brush and not by hand. Uh, all right, next is the table saw. So the table saw is a really useful uh, piece of machinery that, again, gets a lot of use, uh, especially when we're making uh, field elements. So you want to make sure that all guards are in place before you start the machine. Uh, our table saws have a guard, a plastic, it's like a clear plastic guard that goes over the top of the saw blade so that the saw blade is never out in the open while it's cutting. Um, that is really important to have in place. It'll slide out of the way when you move stuff through it. It needs to be on there. 
uh, you want to make sure your blade height is roughly an eighth of an inch above your material or about like one sawtooth height above your material. So what you'll do, let's say you're cutting a piece of wood, you'll slide your piece of wood up against the saw, you'll turn the knob on the, on the, excuse me, on the table saw until you see the blade rise about an eighth of an inch or one tooth of height above that material, and then you'll keep it there in that place. And you can lift the guard up for this reason, and then you have to lower the guard back down when you do that. Uh, you want to make sure you keep your material absolutely as flat as you can against the table to avoid kickback. So what kickback is, when you're pushing a piece of wood into the saw or a piece of material into the saw, uh, and it's not level on the table, the saw is spinning so fast and has so much grip that it is just going to grab that piece and launch it right back at you. If you're cutting through and the saw is actually making it all the way through the material, you're keeping it flat and you're pushing it straight, that shouldn't happen. You should never get kicked back. But if your material is riding up onto the saw, it's almost always going to kick back. Uh, you want to make sure you're using the right guards for the right job. So there's guards in place for ripping and cross-cutting. So you need to make sure you're using the right one. Uh, in this picture here, uh, in the bottom right, it's kind of on the text a little bit, but you can see that there's a guard on the side there. That guard locks in place and allows you to make a straight cut. And again, that's keeping you from holding your hand in that one spot. Um, you also want to make sure, again, the material is flat against the guard and is in place. So the guard is useless if you're not actually pressing the piece of material up against that guard. Uh, also, push sticks are one thing that we use to keep your hand away from the blade. It's essentially just like a wooden or a plastic stick that pushes down on the board, and you can use it to push through the blade. So it keeps your hand away. If you have a lot of material in between the guard and the blade, you can use your hand. But when you have less than probably six inches of material, I'd suggest using a, uh, a push stick. And the table saw is arguably one of the most dangerous machines in the shop. It can cause kickback. The blade is spinning very fast. It's exposed. You want to make sure you are treating it with the respect it deserves. You need to make sure all the guards are in place. You need to make sure that you have people, you know, standing away from the machinery when you're using it. You make sure your hands are moving in the right spot. Your material is flat. Just treat the machine with respect. You don't need to be afraid of it, but it just know that it is a dangerous machine. So in our shop, we have two chop saws. Uh, we have one that we use in the wood shop for wood, and then we have one in the main shop that we cut uh, metal and uh, material like that on. So the they're both fairly loud, but the metal one specifically is extremely loud. So when you're running the metal chop saw, ear protection is required for you, and let people in the area know that you're running it. It's very loud. It's jarring when you hear it go off. So make sure that you're saying, hey, I'm going to go run this. I'm going to go cut a piece of material on this. Use your protection and just be courteous to people around you. Uh, it's also important to note here, just as a general requirement when using any of the machines in the shop, make sure that when you're using the machine, that's what you're focused on. If you see someone using a machine, don't call their name. Don't scream at them. Don't horseplay. Uh, it's, it's very serious. Someone can turn away and then the next thing you know, they're cutting something they're not meant to be cutting. Uh, so any material that you cut in the chop saws, you need to make sure it's clamped down and it's tight, uh, or sorry, you need to make sure it's in the clamp, and then you can check to line it up with the saw and then lock it in place in the clamp. So the metal chop saw has a sort of uh, sliding clamp on it or, or vice, and you can use that. And the woodworking chop saw has a clamp that comes from the side and wraps around and locks down onto your piece of material. So you want to make sure there are any cords or fingers or anything out of the cutting path of the blade besides what you want to be cutting. So make sure that, again, uh, there's the cord of the saw isn't draped over the cutting area. I know that sounds silly, but it happens. Uh, you want to make sure, again, your hands are out of that cutting space. So normally, uh, chop saws, like the, I know the wood one below, the like DeWalt, I think there's some other brands that have it too. They actually have spots where they'll show you on the saw to place your hands. And the best idea is place it as far away from the cutting area as you possibly can. Uh, but, 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 yeah, you want to start the saw at the top of its arc. So they lock in that position at the top. And normally there are buttons on the handle that are like there's a safety and then there's a start button on that saw. And you want to start it at the top when the guard is fully engaged. So if you see in that picture there on the bottom right, the guard covering the saw is fully engaged and that's when you want to start it. You never want to start the saw with the blade exposed. So you start the saw on the top of that arc 
and you pull it down into your work and you cut slowly applying pressure as you move through. So you'll feel it catch in the material and you'll cut right through. Blade's spinning fast, so it should cut through easily. The metal one is a little bit different. It, it feels totally different and depending on what you're cutting, it'll slide through. So you wanna, once you make that full cut and you come to the bottom of the arc, when you're done cutting, you wanna release the safety and the power button. The saw is slowly gonna spin down and stop spinning. And then once it stops spinning, you're going to release it, pull it back up to the top of the arc and then remove any material. You never wanna reach in when the saw is still spinning, even if it's like cut off, it can still cut you. And the last thing we're gonna worry about is the lathe. So most, if not all injuries on from the lathe come from entanglement. That means that there's hair, hang down, there's something like baggy clothes getting in the way, someone's hand gets in the machine. The lathe is spinning at a very fast speed, uh, it's spinning very accurately. So you need to keep loose items away from the machine and tied up, even if you were nearby, even if you're not the operator of the machine, if you're near the lathe, make sure that you're not, nothing is hanging down from what you're working on near the lathe. Uh, the lathe is a really special piece of equipment. It's very unique, and it's going to be used by designated students. So obviously, if you want to use the lathe, if you want to learn how to use it, someone can teach you how to use that. But it's not really a machine that we want everybody standing in front of and working on. Uh, it's, you know, it, it takes practice, and it's very specific how you need to use it. So we ask, again, that if you want to use that machine, that you ask somebody or you're someone that's trained on it. Uh, you want to keep the working area of the lathe free of scraps and tools. Uh, tools can get in the way when it's spinning and get launched out of it. You really want to keep that machine clean and the students that use it take good care of it and, and try and keep it that way. Uh, make sure the machine is off before you mount or remove any accessories or material. So again, it's spinning very fast. You don't want to be attaching anything while it's spinning. That's a horrible idea. You don't want to be inserting any material while it's spinning. That's a horrible idea. And we also have a CNC machine in the shop, and that's sort of like the lathe as a specialized piece of equipment. And that's something that you can get trained on, but it's not really something that any student can just walk up to and use any time of the day once they've been trained on it, like the bandsaw. Like the bandsaw, if you're trained on it and students have to go cut something, go cut something on that. But the lathe and the uh, CNC are different. All right, does anyone have any questions they want to type in the chat that I can answer? All right, I'm not seeing anything right now, but if uh, if anyone needs to reach out or has any questions, uh, you can ask Aaron for my contact info. I'll be happy to help with anything that I can. Doesn't look like we have any questions, unless something showed up uh, between me unmuting. But so I think that's going to be it for this week. Um, do we have anything else we need to go over? Uh, next week, the same time at 1130, we're going to be holding the strategy and game analysis RoboU. Uh, there's a question in the chat for you, Jacob. Can any type of material be cut on the table saw? Uh, not our table saw. Our table saw in the wood shop is specifically for wood. It has a wood cutting blade on it. Uh, some of the band, shop, band saws in the shop will have a sign on it that tells you if it can only be used for wood or other material. So again, table saw, you only want to be cutting wood through that. I'll just wait and see if we get any more questions before I outro us here. And that's similar to our lathe in the shop. The lathe that we have in the main shop is for metal. There is one in the wood shop. We don't really use the wood shop lathe that often, but uh, that's it's important to know what machine you're running and what material can be used in it. And if you don't know, ask. All right, it doesn't look like we have any questions as of right now. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that next week at 1130, again, we're going to be having a RoboU session. It's going to be about strategy and game analysis. 
Uh, there will be an email sent out. As there wasn't this week, there will be an email sent out of with a link and uh, all the information you'll need. And we'll also be uh, re-watching this RoboU next week for the people that missed it. Uh, because this is quite possibly the most important RoboU we have every year. Because safety, especially this year, is a huge thing. But since I don't see any more questions, I think we're going to end it off here. Uh, thank you all for coming and learning about safety. And yeah, I think that's it.